Good morning and welcome to our Faith to Faith broadcast. I'm Bishop Carl J. Van and thank you for welcoming us into your homes this morning. I pray that you are enjoying the blessings of the Lord for the word of God tells us the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he adds no sorrow to them. If you're not experiencing the blessings of the Lord, know this, that all is well at the end and if all is not well, it is not the end. God never ends on the negative. That means that if you're going through a trial or a test, the Lord is not finished, and when it's over, you'll come out and he'll get the glory. The battle is already won through what Jesus has done. We pray that this message will be a blessing to you. Now, enjoy. So, it has to be candid. That is, it has to be real. It has to be something you purpose in your own heart. And this, this is why uh, we don't want the worship leaders to be up here and say, come on, come on, come on. Come on, uh, uh, I heard a, a DVD where a person even fussed them out. And I think curse. <laughs> no, let's not go that far. We can encourage people to worship, but, but we're not going to pu keep pulling you and straining you because if you got it, you got it, and if you don't, you don't. Hallelujah. Everybody is not in a position to worship God. Amen. Glory to God. And so it has to not only be candid, but it also has to be credible. That is, it has to be in truth. We, real worship is more than sincerity or being earnest. How many times have you heard people say, well, they, they are so sincere? This woman was sincere, probably in her worship at these different places, at a different temple with a different worship system. But she, she was worshiping sincerely, but she was sincerely wrong. It has to be based on truth, on knowledge. Verse 22 says, ye worship, ye know not what? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So it has to be in truth. He says, you know not, so you're not worshiping in truth. You got to know to worship in truth. You got to know that God lives, that Jesus was born of a virgin, that he suffered, bled, and died, and gave his life for the sins of mankind, but that he was buried and rose again from the dead. That's who you got to know who you're worshiping. Hallelujah. That's in truth because Jesus and Jesus only is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You've got to worship in spirit and in truth or in Jesus. Hallelujah. In the knowledge of of Jesus. Without this, you can have all kinds of sincere thoughts about wrong things. Uh, the fifth point, he, he instructs her on worshiping. Look at John 21 and 24. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. It's not about where you worship. It's about whom you worship. Do you hear me? People make pilgrimages to Rome. People make pilgrimages to Mecca. And some people even make pilgrimages to Jerusalem uh, to, to get in a certain holy place and worship God. Well, you don't have to go to those places. And there's nothing wrong with going to those places if you want to tour them. But you don't have to go there uh, to, to find God. That's why Jesus says it's expedient for you that I go away so that the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus wouldn't just be found in Jerusalem, but everywhere. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And, and they think that if I can get to that geographical place and touch that relic, God will be near. He can be near right here in Norfolk, Virginia. The essence of true worship is not external 
but internal. Internal. Internal, saints. Yet we're so prone to identify worship with externals, like how nice or shabby the building is, or how many is in attendance, or, or how good the music is, or, or how gifted the preacher is, or whether someone near us is doing something on their smartphone other than, uh, than, than reading a Bible app or taking notes. Uh, we come here uh, uh, as the audience when we shouldn't be the audience, God should uh, uh, be the audience. We should be the participants. Hallelujah. Do you hear me, saints? We should be the participants, getting the audience of God. Mm. Some of you can't worship unless you're sitting in your seat. Uh, excuse me, this is my seat. <laughs> Come on. I can only feel God here. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. What's the difference between praise and worship? Because they're not the same. We speak of them together, but there's a difference between praise and worship. It's like salt and pepper. Praise brings the presence of God, and worship is our encounter of communion with the Lord in that presence. Praise brings, brings the presence of God, but worship is entering into that presence and going into the holy of holies. Worship is an encounter in the presence of the Lord filled with energy, excitement, and exuberance. Some of you remember Star Trek. Well, on Star Trek, they would be in one place and they needed to be to another place. So they would just get on the spot. And once they got on the spot, uh, Captain Kirk uh, would say or somebody else would say, Hit the button. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Immediately, they be, they'll be translated and show up in another dimension. What was in that movie, that's what worship is in your life. When you worship God, you're saying, beam me up, Lord. And he beams you up. And he carries you to another dimension. He places you in another realm. He carries you in another stratosphere. Hallelujah. When you worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, no prison can hold you. That's why the Bible tells us that at midnight, when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, the doors of the prison were open and everybody's shackles were loose because when you get in praise and worship, no prison can hold you. Depression can't stay on you. Anxiety can't ride you. Glory to God. When you praise the Lord in spirit and in truth, he gives you the garment of praise instead of the spirit of of heaviness. There is no way that you can worship God and be depressed. No way in the world. There's no place in worship where problems cannot follow. There's a place in worship where problems cannot follow. When you start worshiping the Lord, your problems have to say, I can't go any Further, you're going into worship. I've got to get off here. I'm not allowed to go where you're going. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the power of worship. That's the power of worship. Only worship can turn clock Kent into Superman. Only worship can turn Bruce Wayne into Batman. Only worship can turn David Banner into the Incredible Hulk. And for you, 
sisters. Only worship can turn Diana Prince into Wonder Woman. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm talking about worshiping the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And an airplane pilot was flying, was flying his plane one day when he heard a scratching sound behind him. Knowing he was the only one on board, he quickly realized that it must be a rat. Putting on his oxygen mask, he began to increase altitude and continued this until the scratching and the gnawing sounds stopped. After concluding his fight, flight, the pilot searched his plane and found the dead body of the rat next to a hydraulic line that was almost chewed in two. He had killed it by taking it to an altitude where there wasn't enough oxygen to sustain its life. He had not, if he had not done so, that little rat would have brought down the plane by chewing off the hydraulic line. But the rat couldn't breathe in such rarefied air. So it is when we worship where it can't breathe in the place where God is. Glory to God. Anxiety can't breathe. Depression can't be sustained in the place where God is. Glory to God. Anger can't stay there in the place where God is. Mm. Huh. That's why I have to get in worship. I've got to get in worship. Thank you, Jesus. You know, my wife was telling me between services that in, when an eagle flies, if there are bugs on him that are pestering him, he just goes higher. And the higher he goes, those bugs have to fall off. They can't stay up there where the eagle soars. Isn't that what God likens us to? He likens us unto eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Worship in spirit. Hallelujah. Worship in spirit and truth saturates you with power and with glory. I'm not talking about this little cutesy stuff that we do in church. You know, looking around to see if anybody's watching us. And, you know, we got it all together. We be, sure, be sure they see how cool we are in our dance. I'm not talking about that. Now, 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 there's nothing wrong. Sometimes you have to start in the flesh to get in worship. But if you start in the flesh, don't stay there. Right. And don't start with the wrong motive. Right. If you start in the flesh, start in the flesh to praise and worship God, not to show off. Yes. Glory to God. Hebrews, look at what Hebrews, the 12th chapter, they will put Hebrews, the 12th chapter on the light vision screen. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 22 and 23. They say, but ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and into an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all. So when you worship God in the spirit, you become aware that you are not alone. You have to be a true worshiper to know what I'm talking about. I know some of you know what I'm talking about. In that mention, it feels like somebody is worshiping the Lord with you. You feel like you're not alone. Sometimes you'll hear a celestial orchestra. Sometimes you'll hear an, an organ. Or it seems like you can hear the flapping of wings. We're not being extreme, but this is really what happens. You see what the, what the, the devil tries to take, the glory and the bliss of worshiping God and, 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 and put it into a little cigarette and call it weed and try to get people high on weed and high on heroin and high on cocaine. When God made you, he wants you to get high in his spirit. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And so the devil has counterfeits. Instead of being drunk off the spirit, he'll have you drunk off Jack Daniels. 
Jesus. Glory to God. But on this Pentecostal Sunday, my Bible tells me that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place with one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it sat upon each of them. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and they were all drunk. And, and, and somebody mocked and said, these men are drunk. And Peter stood up and said, they're not drunken as ye suppose. He didn't say they weren't drunk. He said they weren't drunken like ye suppose. It's okay to be drunk, but be drunk in the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be drunk in the spirit. I got, I got to rush now. I got to rush because I got two more points. And my time is out. Uh, verses 23 and 24 say, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers, and now is, if it now is then, then surely it now is today. And the, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must. It's not optional. It's not take it or leave it. It's not multiple choice. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Real worship, not just noise, but real worship opens up the spirit realm. Hallelujah, where God is. And the Father wants you to come up to where he is. He's in the spirit realm. And the spirit realm is more real than this realm. It has to be because the spirit realm is the parent of this realm. The spirit realm is the root and this realm is just the branches. So the spirit realm is more real than this realm. That's where God is and he wants you there worshiping him. He's seeking those. He's seeking those. Will you be one of those here? Will you be one of those that he's seeking? The word of God says the eyes of the Lord goes to and fro throughout all the earth, seeking those whose hearts are perfect toward him, that he may show himself strong on their behalf. God wants to show himself strong on your behalf, but you got to become a worshiper, and that in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah wrote, he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And when they started worshiping the Lord, notice what the next verse says. The next verse says, after they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. It says, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. If you want to move some post in your life, if you want to move some stuff that has been trying to be Im unmovable, then you start praising and worshiping the Lord. This means that stuff that said it couldn't be moved will be moved when you get in the spirit and in truth. Things that have stood up in your face and said, I've been here for years and I won't come down. When you worship God, it'll start crumbling down. Yes! Somebody needs to move some posts today. Somebody needs to move some walls today. Somebody needs to move some barriers today. Somebody needs to move some mountains today. Glory to God. I dare you to worship him until you move something. I've got to move some stuff. Some stubborn stuff 
some hateful stuff, some damaging stuff that are trying to hold me back. I've got to move some stuff and it'll only be moved as I praise and worship the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll move your struggles. He'll move your bondages. He'll move your boss. If he needs to be moved, he'll move your neighbors who are inconsiderate. If they need to be moved, yes, he will. He'll move your debt. He'll move your crisis. He'll move your limitations. Oh, yes, he will. Hallelujah. If you just worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sadly, we're just satisfied with this shake and bake, self-serve, microwave stuff. We just come to church, and if it's, if it's more than an hour and a half, I'm out of here. So I suppose the Lord wants you to stay in his presence for two or three hours. What will you say then? Are you in control, or is he in control? Put God in control. Let him control your life. Get in the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Let me make this last point and then we'll close. I'll tell my story and we'll close. This last point is, and because I'm already over time, I won't review the six prior points. They'll have them on the life vision screen. My last point is she, is, she is inspired to be a witness. I said she's inspired to be a witness. She runs away, leaving her water pots. The very reason she came there. And now she's drinking from the well at the well. That is, that is satisfying her thirst. Much greater than the water that she came there to fetch. Verse 29 tells us. She says, come see a man. Can you say, come see a man? Come see a man which told me all things ever I did. She says, is not this the Christ? Is not this the one we're looking for? Come see a man. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the man at the well heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now safe am I. Come see a man. Come see a man. Come see a man. Come see a man that can wash you white as snow. Come see a man that can cut off your drinking. Come see a man that can stop you from fornicating. Come see a man that can stop you from gambling. Come see a man. That can make you holy. That can make you righteous. Yeah. Ow. Ow. Come see a man. 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 These despised Samaritans, they're the first group of people, the despised ones, because the Lord is not prejudiced. He loves everybody. Yes, he does. The Samaritans, whom the Jews hate or despise, Jesus loves them. And they're the first ones. It's in verse 39. They call him the Savior of the world. I said it wasn't the Jews that did it. It was somebody else. They call him the Savior of the world. And he is the Savior of the world. Can I tell my story? Hallelujah. Little 
little Johnny was sleeping upstairs. His mom tucked him in in the bed and she went downstairs. All of a sudden, two o'clock in the morning, she heard a thump, boom, boom, boom. It woke her up. She heard some crying. She ran upstairs. It was Johnny. He had fallen off the bed. And so she put him back in the bed. And the next day, she put him in the bed again and went downstairs. And he started sleeping good. At about 2 o'clock again, he fell off the bed. Boom, 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 boom. She heard him crying and she ran upstairs to see what the problem was. Mom, I fell off the bed again. And so she put him back on the bed, helped him get back in the bed. And then it happened a couple of days later. Boom, boom, boom. He fell off the bed. She, he started crying. She goes upstairs and said, Johnny, what's wrong? He says, Mom, I keep falling off the bed. She says, Johnny, Johnny, you got to stop falling off the bed. She says, I know, Mom. How can I stop falling off the bed? Mom says it's very simple. You just got to get in deeper. You got to go in further. And that has a biblical truth. You got to get further in the bed if you don't want to fall off. Well, you got to get further in the bed if you want to enjoy this Christian life. You got to get further in the bed than to get rid of your struggles. You got to get further in the bed and you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. You're not in the bed enough. You're on the edge. You're striding in the fence. I dare you to get all the way. Go all the way. Get in the bed. You won't fall off. You'll be faithful. Yes, you will. You'll pay your tithes. You'll pray. You'll fast if you get all the way in the bed. Thank you for watching our Faith to Faith broadcast. We pray that this message really ministered to you. Pastor Barbara, New Life Worship Center, and I would just love to have you to be a part of one of our services. We have two morning worship services on Sunday mornings at 8 and 11, and then we have a midweek service on Wednesday nights at 7.30. In fact, you still have time to meet us at our 8 o'clock service. When you come at the end of the service, if it's not an imposition, just come on up and let Pastor Barbara and I know that you were a part of our service. We would just love to have you and share with you how glad we are that you are with us on today. So until next time, come receive the word, leave and experience the difference at New Life. <laughs>